This is a country that's grown almost 10 percent a year for 30 years. But what the Chinese have recognized is the model of that growth, driven by exports and to a degree by investment, has to change to more consumer demand, more domestic demand. But there are other changes afoot in China. This is a country that, because of the one-child policy, will grow old in terms of demographics before it grows rich. There's issues of ecology and the environment that have been put second or third place compared to growth. There's issues of urbanization. Uh, there's social disparity issues that could also lead to so difficulties. So for a host of reasons, China needs to change its economic model. And what we're quite excited about is the year or over more that we've spent working with China to try to define what could it do to lead structural change. What's impressive about this is that even though China has grown so successfully, that they're willing to step back and see what needs to be done. In some ways, developed countries might also benefit from this. But one area, for example, is fiscal reform. You read the stories about problems with land in China. Well, many of the sub-governments, the provincial city governments, have to take the land to finance themselves. So you need to have a revenue system that is matched with the expenditure level. Another issue is completing the transition to a market economy, whether it be state-owned enterprises, whether it be land, whether it be the pricing of natural resources, which also leads to overuse. A key issue is basic social safety nets. This is not only to help the poor, but a society in transition, whether it be education, health, uh, basic uh, pension issues. The overuse of resources has led to huge environmental problems. So how can they clean up the environment, but also make this as a source of growth for the green economy? Because the population is actually, uh, the workforce is going to be coming down because you want to increase wages, you have to make people more productive. So how do you add to the value-added nature of the economy and partly do that through an open society of innovation connected to international markets? And finally, just as China has benefited enormously from WTO membership over the past 10 or 11 years, how can these changes be fit in with its role as a responsible stakeholder in the international economy because of the rest of the world also depends on China's growth?